Hey, 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 now listen, this interview is fire. From kindergarten teacher to multi-million dollar earner. Crazy. Her team does over a billion dollars in sales a year. Learn how and learn her story in this amazing interview. You're going to love Sarah. Hey, 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 what is up? What's happening? I am super excited for this interview. It's been uh, many, many years in the works. Uh, this is someone that I've, I've always kind of, you know, I've always admired from afar and always enjoyed her work and, and how she showed up for the industry. Um, but we've just, you know, never done anything together. And, and so I'm excited for this to be the first of, of hopefully many things that, that we get to do together. And um, I'm just really, really excited to, to bring her out here. And she's going to share how she went from kindergarten teacher to multi-million dollar earner. How cool is that? Who I'm bringing on is a top leader in the network marketing industry. She's a sought after keynote speaker, best-selling author, consultant, and coach. Her team does over a billion dollars in sales every year. And her passion is teaching leaders how to level up and create legacy. Her and her husband, Phil, have two boys and through their businesses have hundreds more in, in India through the support they provide in housing, education, nutrition as they build orphanages through Angel House. And just amazing, amazing what she is doing, not just you know, you know, in, in her business and in our industry, but also all throughout the world. So please help me welcome Sarah Robbins. Sarah, how are you? Hi. And let me just say, I'm so excited that we finally were able to come together and no. do this today. But let me just say what you and your beautiful wife have mm. done for our profession. Like, oh. I just have to say thank you because you have been so consistent, so incredible in terms of just the support and the value that you give to your community, but also mm. the industry. I am so pumped that we get to spend some time together today and Aww. pour into some amazing people. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. That's so cool. Yeah. Like, like you've even been in Naples, right? And we just, yes. we just could not make it work. <laughs> we will. We will. My mom has a place there now because we, we all will. decided after like, you know, for me, 40 plus years of being in cold weather in Michigan, like, what are we doing anymore? So they mm -hmm. escaped to Naples. We escaped to California. We're getting sunshine. So we got to hang next time yes. we're in Naples. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, who? I'm sorry, who's in Naples? My mom. So my mom Maybe. is actually my sponsor in the business. So wow, cool story wow. there. Um, but anyhow, she and my dad, they're both over in Naples. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. And I am, I'm super excited and I'm super honored and, and blessed that you are going to be one of our featured speakers at Rankmakers Live this year. I super literally excited. cannot wait. And I just yeah. want to say this, like, that is actually going to events, being a student of our profession. That is how I actually got any start because my mom wow. and I were the first two distributors in our company. We had wow, no trainers, no training. We didn't even have a compensation plan. So <laughs> literally just started buying books, going to events. And that is how we really got our start. So I just want to encourage people, you know, if they're considering whether or not to make that investment, I would say, what is your why worth? You know, if it weren't yeah for people like you and all of the people really pouring in and, and giving that training really back when we started, I don't know where we'd be today. It built our belief. It gave us the skill set, gave us the tools. So such a powerful, powerful thing when we're able to really go and plug in and learn. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, so something when I, when I talked to someone who got in, you know, er, to a company early, uh, you know, the phrase I, I say is, uh, people always want to be in early until they're in early. <laughs> yes. that? Isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I tell people the stories. I'm like, you know, here's the thing, like leaders play the long game, right? And they don't quit on a bad day and they don't quit on their team. And, you know, I just remember back in the days we were starting like checks going to the wrong house and, you know, all of the, like, again, it was like the scrappy startup days. And obviously now we're far past those things, but as you grow, you have different sets of problems. But truly, I really think about what other business, right? What other business model do we have the potential to 
do what we do, give how we give, really create legacy and create something of our own without having to establish these big brands all on our own. But I'll tell you, there are for sure trials that come with it. But um, the rewards have been just absolutely amazing. The teams we've grown, the team we've grown, the lives we've changed. Yeah. So it's been incredible. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, so tell me, like, and some some on here may know your story, but how how did you get into the network marketing space? Who, I guess it was your mom. So we know we know your mom prospected you, and I don't know if that was your first time, but how how did you get introduced to network marketing? Okay. So we had a few little blips in network marketing, I will say like way back in the day, but it didn't last more than a day because I really didn't understand even what it was or, you know, how it could even change our life. So it was like, buy a starter kit, do it for a day. This isn't working. I'm moving on. And so actually our story was very interesting. Our company used to be in retail. It was a retail brand first before it was in direct sales. And I was a kindergarten teacher facing the loss of my job. Recession Mm -hmm. of 08. So as we look at today's times and we're like, man, you know, it's tough. Things are uncertain. Mm -hmm. We really have this reverse economy. If it weren't for what was happening in the economy, I wouldn't have been open to another industry. So when I was facing the loss of my job, I had to look for extra money because I was thinking, gosh, you know, I was, I was the most requested teacher in the building, but teacher tenure out, you know, it trumped performance any day. So there I am looking for extra income. My mom was working for our brand back when it was in retail. And she was like, Hey, I got you a job, 20 bucks an hour doing some freelancing. Cool. So that's what I did. I was there just kind of making some extra money And we got a call one day letting us know they were going to leave retail, go into direct sales. Did we want to do it? Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, absolutely not. I really didn't know what I was saying yes or no to, but it was like the idea of like, you know, sales and all the, I thought, gosh, that's really not me. But it was my mom who was a successful serial entrepreneur who's like, oh, I know the stories of the Arbons. I know the stories of this company, that company. You know, I know these leaders. I know the legacy And she was like, we would be crazy not to do it. So I'm the firstborn child compliant, right? So it's like, whatever my mom tells me to do, I'm like, fine. So it was really like, you know, that FOMO, that fear of missing out. And that is what really caused me to say yes. And again, it was this idea of like, can you afford to? Well, can you afford not to, right? Like I was just really hard pressed. I was in a tough place. I tell the story. I literally, we had 19 cents in our bank account. So I was looking, going, what's the risk? What's the reward? Right. And so really becoming a student of it, giving myself grace to grow because my story wasn't always impressive. In fact, I think for quite a few years in the beginning, I used to be the least highest earner if ever there was a title. I mean, I struggled my way through it, but just continued to make that decision every day And again, because I had immersed myself in stories, I knew the stories of other people who had done it, who had gone before me. And I thought, well, gosh, if they can do this, I can learn how to do this too. And it was really about just being a student and really being coachable and putting in the work and being consistent really over time. Yeah. Amen. And one thing that that I've been talking to a lot of teams about and a lot of leaders about is that whole when you know the reverse economy you know that you were talking about um you know i mean i i i I got serious i had dabbled but i got serious about network marketing in 2009 after losing everything and i know so many top earners now top earners that came in in 2008 2009 because there was a disruption in their career because there was changes and so a lot of I th- you know, right now it seems like a lot of existing network marketers are like, you know, all oh, the market and inflation and this and that. And man, if you look at the top earners in, in our industry, a lot of them came in during that period. Yes. Do you agree with that? Do you see a similarity? 100% agree. I, I tell people, I'm like, it wasn't just our company that was growing in triple digits. It's like the industry had its greatest wave of growth. Yeah. I think, you know, it's, 
we're all coming out of these uncertain times where it's not just the yeah. economy, but everything that happened over the past few years. So I think we're dusting ourselves off again. We're getting yeah. back into, you know, like the in-person stuff from lifestyle prospecting to doing events, et cetera. So it takes a minute to kind of get those wheels churning, to build those muscles back up again. Yeah. But I think what we'll see over the next few years is going to be just exciting growth again. And so, you know, it's really just keeping that excitement, that expectation for really what's to come. And I said, it's not about being opportunistic. It's about offering opportunity and truly thinking about it this way. Like this industry was an answer to my prayers. Literally I prayed, I was like, God, send me an opportunity. And it came in the form of something different than I ever imagined, but it's like, we could Which be, is usual. <laughs> yeah, it could be somebody's answer. Right. And so yeah. Instead of being scared, instead of holding back, I think we need to talk about with such great pride, such excitement, what we have. We've got something that is low cost. They can do it their time, their terms, and really design a professional life that fits around the rest of their life. We're not trading hours for dollars. You know, we're, we're really just doing this on our time, our terms, building an awesome community around it. And again, there's really nothing else out there like it. It's like people want, you know, we, we're talking about the gig economy, this and that. I'm like, it's that on steroids. Everybody wants yeah. to be an influencer, work on their phone. Like we get to do that and so much more. And it's not just empowering us, but empowering others too. And that's what clearly gets me so excited. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you said it that way of, hey, we're not being opportunist. It's like, people are seeking, right? You know, most yeah. people don't know how to make extra money other than a yard sale yeah. or Facebook marketplace. They don't know how to make consistent money. And, you know, the gig economy is great, but it's also, you know, trading time, you know, for money. You know, yeah. you don't get a, you know, 10% of every Uber drive you've ever done, you know, you know, ongoing, right? It's, it's, That's you right. got to drive or else yep. that money is gone. And, and so I just, you know, love your love for the, for the profession. And it reminds me, like when you say, you know, opportunist, um, you know, I talk, as you know, I talk about, you know, faith nowadays uh, yes. and, you know, in Proverbs 26, it says, uh, curse it is he who withholds grain yep. and, you know, grain being solution, right? Yes. That, that could be you being too worried to tell someone about your, your opportunity. And now that doesn't mean be aggressive or beat them over the head with it or, you know, put them in a chokehold, but for you to at least <laughs> offer, you know, something. Yes. And so uh, I'm curious, how do you, how do you mix, you know, faith and, and business? Do you, do you talk much about faith? Do you kind of, is that more reserved or like, how, how do you show up around faith and business? You know what? It's the coolest thing because I always say like, there's just not a way for me to shut it off because it's part of who I am. Yeah. And it's like you, it's like, his kindness leads people to repentance. It's like just being kind and creating a space where I'm not, you know, like it's, it's not about the controversy of things, you know, it's like loving God, loving people well. And that's really how uh, my husband, Phil and I have just shown up and, you know, just giving people the space and place, like creating relationships. And I think that's the biggest thing is just like create getting in relationship with people. And it's really opened the door to just incredible, incredible conversation. And I look at what we do too. It's like marketplace ministry. You know, it's like we have a lot of people set up that we can pour into, that we can give life to, that we can speak life into. It is, it's the most powerful vehicle I believe, you know, out there where we can reach a lot of people, you know, in just a little bit of time. It's such a, it's such a powerful thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and if you, you know, if you do the work, then you're going to be in front of audiences and, yeah. you know, and that, and that's, what's, you know, pretty neat about this, you know, uh, network marketing I see as the lowest risk, lowest overhead way for the average ordinary person to start a business. And, um, you know, it's just something that, there's a lot of people that come into network marketing that never would have launched a restaurant, never would have, you know, started their own company or bought a warehouse or, you know, whatever. Yeah. But we, you know, they come into, you know, to this space and, and, you know, you're able, you're able to help them. Yeah. So it's really, you know, really powerful and cool. And so what are you, um, other than Rank Makers Live, of course, what are you most excited about right <laughs> now in your life? What do you got going on? That's like, 
This is oh just my gosh. Amazing. Yeah. So first of all, raising our two amazing boys. And yeah. I was going to say, I mean, that is really the blessing of How our old? business. So two and seven, we've got a little oh. gap there. Um, the seven, he's typical firstborn compliant kid. And the two is typical twos for sure. His favorite yeah. words are uh-oh and no, no. And we're working <laughs> on apologizing and all of these things. So it's fun. It's fun. It'll keep you on your toes. Um, but it's cool because I say to my oldest son, I'll be like, what, do you, what does mommy do? And he goes, I don't know, mom, but you always help a lot of people. And I was like, that's true. So it's cool. So that is first and foremost, my number one priority. I've gotten really good at practicing what I preach, establishing hours of operation. Like when kids are home from school, like all of it is off, which is a beauty and really the benefit to like working from home, being here with the little one, which is so incredible. So that, you know, first and foremost, and then of course, you know, really just the excitement that we're seeing in the industry. Like I am so passionate and I think it's because right. Like you, we, our business was birthed during a crazy time. And I remember literally just being so scared, so scared. I was thinking, gosh, what if I lose this teaching job? I had, you know, interviewed against 1100 people to get my particular job. And I was thinking, wow. what is life going to look like? And so I see things with totally different eyes. Obviously, you know, with my faith, I see things always like I'm, I'm, I operate in that attitude of faith. I don't get into scarcity, scarcity, marketing, scarcity, mindset, any of it, yeah. but also too, I think just having walked through it, I have such a great expectancy for the lives that are going to be changed. And we're really going to see that just over the next few years, it's going to be powerful to see the next new wave of leaders that are going to be birthed in our profession during yeah. this time. I mean, it's going to be absolutely incredible. What What's maybe some, some advice that you have for someone on here that is not yet seeing momentum, not yet seeing you know, the, the, the good side of, of the business. And they're kind of like, when, you know, when are these people going to step it up? And they're, they're, you know, they've been patient, but they're like, you know, what, what advice might you have for that person is yet to really taste any kind of success in this business? Yeah. First of all, keeping your hopes up. I think that's the biggest thing. Hope is the seed that leads to faith, right? That we can actually believe for it and see it and making sure too, that we aren't, killing those seeds by the things that we're speaking. I, I believe life and death is in the tongue and you will eat the fruit thereof. So like watching the things that you're declaring and you're speaking. Um, I know, you know, Doug Firebaugh and a lot of people don't know, but he had a Bible study and that's where actually um, I got started in network marketing. I was going oh, wow. to his church, his Bible study, and he was really just raising up Christian entrepreneurs. And so during that time, I learned the power of my words, the power of the spoken word, the power of just declaration. In fact, I got to share with you a cool story because I, I if for anybody who's thinking that I was there, it took me three months to recruit my first person. More people quit than actually got started. I mean, I've gone through it all. And I actually remember one day pulling up to his Bible study that he was doing and uh, my mom, one of my mom's friends calling me, I call it my come to the parking lot moment. I'm sitting in the parking lot. My mom's friend calls me. She was having great success in our business. I was not. And she was like, Sarah, I know what the challenge is. And I'm thinking she's going to give me some like business building tip. And I'm so excited. I'm getting my notebook out, ready to write it down. And she was like, you are doing one thing and saying another. She's like, I see you showing up, doing all the things, but then out of, you know, your mouth is coming. Nobody's joining. Everybody's quitting. And she's like, your life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like the things you are speaking, right? Is actually like your words create your world. It's actually what is becoming. And I was like so convicted and clearly it's a moment that I never forgot. It was one of those standout moments of my life. And I remember literally starting to study. In fact, I studied more during that time, more of the personal development stuff, more of, you know, the power of my words, all of these things. Yeah. There's a book by Joyce Meyer, me and my big fat mouth. I'm reading this stuff, nice. going to, um, Doug's church and literally just learning again, just about the power of my words and the power of declaration. 
And literally I started to see things change. I mean, I literally started to say that, you know, and, and really pray a prayer that the leaders that were meant to be blessed by this, that they would come to me. It wasn't about struggling or striving, right? And so in marrying the two things, right? Because I believe, right, there's that verse that says faith without works is dead, right? So we have to have faith, but we also have to work, right? I let Mark Batterson says this in his book, The Circle Maker. He says, pray like it depends on God, work like it depends on you. I had to put in the that. work, right? Like that. I'm showing up. I'm planting the seeds, but I'm also yeah. believing and speaking, right? Just truth over my business and over my life. And I started to see things change. Went from being the least highest earner to being the top earner from yeah. not recruiting anybody, taking three months to being the number one recruiter in my company. still 15 years later. Wow. So it tells you like, I'm a student of this stuff. I've never taken my foot off the gas, right? But I had to really change my stinking thinking. And that's the biggest thing that I will say is like, if you're in this place and you're like constantly in this, this um, environment of defeat, right? Like sometimes yeah. to change our perspective, we have to change that place that we've been in. And how do we change it? If it's not a physical place, right? Sometimes we're stuck in, a, in an environment that we've really created for ourselves, right? Yeah. Because we've gotten stuck in old mindsets where we need to renew our mind, that we've gotten stuck in, you know, those declarations, nobody's joining me, everybody's yeah. quitting. Well, if that's the reality, then what needs to change? You know, yeah. your opportunity hasn't changed. So you, if you see people that are succeeding, you can either say, oh, it must magically work for so-and-so or yeah. say what really needs to change in me. And that's, that's the journey that really like from that point forward that I took was like, what actually needs to change in me? Because the opportunity is good. The products are great, but there's something that needs to change inside of me. And that yeah. changed everything for me. That's, that's so powerful. Such good advice. You know, um, y years ago, I thought, Hey, listen, activity rules all outwork your problems outward. And, and then I just, I started meeting people that were actually doing a lot of work, but not getting any results. And I'm like, Hmm, like they're doing a lot of work, but upon inspection and, and perspective is the word I use too. Um, their perspective was dictating that they get crappy results or they get no results. And, and so it's just, Really, really good advice. Um, you know, I ask people, what are you mentally rehearsing? And unless they're purposely seeing themselves, you know, pray as if you've already received, right? And unless they're purposely seeing themselves in that place of, of having received the things that they're, you know, striving for, then they're slowing themselves down. That's and true. so really, really, really good advice. Really good advice. For those that, you know, take us back, you have some, but for those on here that maybe they're um, either new to network marketing or, or they're, they're in a new company, like tell us a little bit about the growing pains of, of a company. If someone is in a new company, like how did, you know, I, I, I joined the, com the company that I was the number one earner of. I joined while in pre-launch. So, you know, everything was broken. The websites didn't work. Uh, one guy quit because we didn't have business cards, you know, like, you know, I just, <laughs> I'm just a true story. He was fired up one day, the next day I'm out of here. And, uh, and so tell us, you know, cause there's some people commenting, I'm in a new company. What were some of the growing pains you saw? Um, now your, your, your team does a billion dollars in, in sales. Um, what were some of the growing pains that, that you saw that maybe others could see too, that you're encouraging them to you know, see past. Yeah. Well, I left because I remember doing an opportunity meeting and I was a teacher still at the time. So I'm making flyers for this and I am printing them off on neon yellow sheets of paper. And somebody said to me, like, this doesn't look like the creators of Proactive who are our founders did this. And I said, well, they didn't. I did. Like, <laughs> it's like, you know, like we're scrappy, we're figuring it out. And so, but all of that to say, like, we took on the role, like we are like, okay, the company does two things. They ship a product and they write a check. Like we've got to get the word out to people. So it was really like taking responsibility, taking ownership 
and really just assuming our leadership and not waiting for everybody else to lead. You know, it's so interesting because when I hear people say like they blame it on their upline or, you know, what is this person doing or not doing for me? I'm like, it's your name on the check. You are the CEO of your own pseudo franchise, like take it and run with it. And so for us, you know, in the beginning, we just really focused on getting that message out. And I remember my mom and I meeting in a church basement. They had a little coffee shop. And every single week we're passing out these flyers. We're talking to people and we'd say, invite your friends. And then the next week, invite your friends, invite your friends. By the end of the month, we had 300 people who want to join. And this is a funny story. Our CEO, who is one of our founders' husbands, (laughs) called us and said, you have to stop recruiting people. You're growing way too fast. We can't keep up with the amount of people who are signing up. And we're like, it's too late. Like the word is already out. We're already telling people. We actually had a cap for how many people. And again, this is like 15 years ago, but how many people we were allowed to enroll. So again, I just remember the growing pains. I remember, you know, again, not having training, not having trainers, not having a compensation plan. We didn't know how we were going to get paid, but I'll tell you what we had. We had belief. <laughs> we, we had belief. That was, but that was it, right? We took those products. We put them on the counter. We started sharing the story really and sharing. It was possibility, right? That's what attracted to people like we know the possibility we've heard, right. We talked about earlier before you and I uh, went live, we were talking about Donna Johnson. I knew Donna's story. I had seen her speak and I'm like sharing those stories with other people. And I'm going, this is what's possible, right? If you take it, you run with it, you're willing to share it. And it was our excitement. I'm telling you this. And I've heard this now after doing thousands of calls, presentations, et cetera, those who go the distance, it's interesting. No, they don't have to have sales experience. Their backgrounds can be vastly different. The one commonality I find when they bring people to a meeting, to a call, et cetera, that person will always say, the guest will always say, what got me excited was his or her excitement. And that was it. So it was like, we really focused on back in the day. It was like exciting, inviting, exciting, inviting. And we made it that simple for our team too, that that was the only thing that they had to learn to do was like, Hey, next week, invite a friend. So now whether we're doing that live or virtual, it's that excitement that keeps creating that momentum. So that would be the advice that I would give. It's like, you have to remember the excitement of when you first started. And then that is something that you have to continue to renew and right. Plant that seed in others as you're sharing it with them too. And I think that was the key really to having that early success. And again, never quitting on a hard day, seeing past our initial circumstance. And it's interesting. um, A story just came to mind and I've studied a lot through just, it's really like lessons of life and leadership, but It was a story of Moses and you know how there was a promised land and each and every one of you that are listening today, you have a promise. You have something in your life that you were destined to do. And it's so interesting because if you really study that story, which I have, you see all the way from Exodus through numbers, like times that stinky things happened, right? It's like the plagues, right? Um, you, you see the golden calf, you know, the Egyptian army, like all these things, all these crazy, like pressure. Right. But what does pressure do if we allow it to promote us right Mm. now? But it was interesting with the Israelites. So they have this great promise. So can you imagine each and every one of you, you have it, you have something great that is, that lies ahead, right? If you're willing to press through, but you know, we see when these things happen, they were protected, they were provided for. When yep. there was a famine, right? Manna from heaven, bitter yep. water made sweet. When they faced an army opposition, that army was eradicated before their very own eyes, right? The Red Sea was parted. When yep. there was plagues, they were protected. Not one touched them. But it was so interesting because it was almost like they had that temporary amnesia, like they had forgot what just happened. And instead, yeah. like they would take two steps forward and one step back. And I'm like, did you not just see all the times that like things actually worked out for you? Right. So it's like just staying <laughs> focused on the promise. You know, I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. It's staying focused on the promise, staying focused on what lies ahead and just remembering like 
every, all these other things, they're just circumstances, right? They don't dictate your destiny. They're just circumstances and saying, okay, we're going to weather this storm because I know when I do, I'm getting one step further. And really it's like trusting your company, trusting the people who are in place, you know, maintaining a good relationship and trust with different leaders in the company, et cetera, but really staying focused on the promise, what lies ahead and not getting stuck in circumstances, realizing all of those things like this too shall pass. Right. Yeah. Amen. I love it. Um, I saw, I heard, I heard someone uh, breaking down that story and they said, um, apparently that was supposed to take like 11 days, but it ended up being 40 years. Yes. And the, the, what he threw out there was he said, impatience delays the promise. Yes. It's so true. And, and so many people, you know, they, they, you know, maybe they recruit a few people and I talked about this somewhere today. I don't know. Um, and you know, they recruit a few people and then they're like, mm-hmm. and they refresh their screen, like what's going on? Or they're in a new company <laughs> and they're waiting for momentum. Like, come on any day now, get into momentum already versus let me go do it. Let me go make it happen. And, and you're going to say, I got to say this because I got it. I have to say this, or even on the flip side, maybe there's some leaders watching and they're going through tough times and they're sitting yeah. here going, Oh man, I don't know if I can do this. And you know, when I look at the end of this, that story, Ray, like what's crazy is two out of 2 million made it. Cause they go and they get to the very end. So you get to the end, they're about to go into the promised land. Right. And instead of sizing up, their problems to, you know, to, to, to what God was capable of, right. They said, oh my gosh, there's giants in the land. We aren't big enough to defeat the giants instead of saying like, but God is greater. And so I sit and I watch that in any time I face opposition, because listen, as leaders, we're going to any time I feel discouraged, I'm not immune from being discouraged. I look and I'm like, I want to be one of the, one of the two, right. Who actually cross into who make it into the promised land, because here's the thing at the end of the day, it's not just my blessings or, you know, that are tied to my obedience. Other people's blessings are tied to my obedience, right? It's like, I have to maintain the vision to see people through because again, every company, and this is what I want people to hear today. There is not one company that's perfect. There is not one company that is immune to problems. I know we see each other's highlight reel, This is the best company, the best compensation plans and sliced bread. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter where you're at on your journey. You might be just starting off and you might be, you know, just kind of questioning a little bit. Am I capable? Am I able? All these things. You might be a top leader and maybe you feel like, hey, your growth is tapered off or maybe you're going through a little bit of a slump. You know, that's where we have to renew our vision. Remember why we started in the very first place and see past the immediate circumstance, the immediate problem and really focus on the promise and seeing it through, right? And like letting that be the very thing that motivates us. Amen. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, I, I am excited um, to, you know, start doing more cool stuff with you. I'm excited to see you at Rank Makers Live. Um, how, how can people best you know, connect with you, Sarah, if they want to, you know, see some of your other content and, and what you put out there? Yeah. So that you can connect with me on social, Sarah Robbins with an Sarah with an H Robbins two B's and on Instagram, it's Sarah Robbins, the number one. And the reason why I say that is until I get that verified check mark, which I did apply for the new thing that just rolled out, yeah. um, all the crazy impersonator accounts. So newsflash, yeah. I won't talk to you about Bitcoin. The only thing I really yes. post about are my babies Same. and my business. That's it. Yeah. So I uh, <laughs> would love to connect. And Ray, I'm so excited for the event. Yeah. I'm excited not only to serve, but to learn, hmm. um, you know, for really like the first 10 years of our business that we had these super Saturdays and new consultant trainings. I went to every single one wow. because I would always go with the attitude of a student and think, gosh, if I got one tip that yep. could change things, one tip to help me to level up. So like, That is my joy. So I'm so excited to go to sit and to take notes during the entire event myself. And I just want to, again, encourage everybody. I think about how I got my start and it was, it was following, it was learning the stories of other leaders, which that built hope and created that expectancy, right? That faith that like, Hey, 
if it's possible for them, it's possible for me. But then plugging in to be a student of the stuff and to say like, what's one tip, one takeaway, one thing they're saying, doing, et cetera, that I could implement into my business. Guys, I want to encourage you. It's going to be a game changer. And really it has, you know, the, the, the a potential to not only change the game for you, but to really like me, right? Like if you become a student, if you plug in it, when you go to these events, when you invite your team, it can absolutely change your life and help you to leave a legacy too. So I want to meet you all at the event. It's going to be Yay. awesome. We'll hug, handshake, high five, whatever you want to do. And I'm <laughs> super excited to serve. So Ray, thank you for inviting me yes. to be a part of it. And yeah. um, also to just um, serve and share in this capacity today. Again, so admire everything mm. that you're doing and that you have done. And I know we'll continue to do to serve our profession. So just want to oh, say thank you. Appreciate you so very much. Sarah Robbins, absolutely amazing. Uh, share this with someone who may need to hear it. Uh, there's so many points to her story. Teachers, people in new companies, people that have gone through frustration, people that think we're in a market that, oh, no one's doing anything new. No, no, no. People are desperately seeking for solutions and you have a solution. And so, Sarah, thank you so much for your time. You're amazing. and Can't wait to hang out with you more. Back at you. Me too. In Naples. Okay. Yes. In <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Sarah Robbins, everyone, give her some love. Feel free to share and we'll see you soon. So congrats on making it to the end of the video. I hope you got massive value from this. Feel free to subscribe. And I would highly suggest that you click that little bell Bing. so that you're notified as we upload new and free content. Feel free to share this with someone that you think could benefit from it. And just know that we really, really appreciate you. Feel free to check out the description for any kind of links or additional notes. And I hope to see you in the next video.